Okay, so welcome to part two of the webinar series. Uh, we're going to go through the um, uh, auction theory uh, volume profile and microstructure and add that on top of what we learned in part one. Uh, risk disclaimer, uh, trading equities and futures involves substantial risk of loss, is not suitable for all investors, past performance is not indicative of future results. For more information, you can go to bookmap.com, uh, become a member there and you have access to a lot of the free resources. Uh, and uh, you can reach out to us at support at bookmap.com. Right? And uh, I want to show you where you can find Bookmap. Uh, you get a free trial with it. So uh, you can uh, uh, just click here uh, at bookmap.com, uh, click on pricing, uh, come down here, and you can see the uh, uh, different uh, uh, versions that we have. All right? So uh, you get a 14-day trial period with these. Uh, and um, uh, you can see the ones we have here with the uh, basic, uh, we have basic and advanced and we also have the DX feed that's available. Uh, that's for stocks, okay, but if you have the basic or advanced you can also add the DX feed. This is just a package with the DX feed, okay. The DX feed is for equities, okay. Bookmap now works with equities. Uh, and um, uh, other resources here, uh, subscribe or uh, follow us on Twitter uh, and then uh, you will um, uh, get the most updated information uh, and uh, for those of you interested in the um, uh, recordings of the webinar well you can see here on our, our uh, YouTube page you, you can subscribe to it um, and uh, you will get the uh, uh, latest uh, alert when um, uh, the uh, uh, webinars are up uploaded here uh, and um, uh, let me show you where it is in the playlist as well. Okay, so this this is for yesterday's webinar. Uh, there's a new playlist for Bookmap Education course. Click on that, uh, and you can see yesterday's here. Okay, uh, and today's will be in, the, in there as well. You can also see it in recorded webinars uh, playlist here, uh, but um, uh, we'll probably take that out in the near future. All right. Okay. <clears throat> All right, well, let's jump in and uh, get going with uh, auction theory, uh, volume profile, and microstructure with Bookmap. Uh, and uh, a bit about me, uh, 10 years of trading uh, in a variety of markets, product specialist at Bookmap, uh, leading the um, uh, trading education at Bookmap, and expert in order flow and market microstructure. Uh, I just showed you the Twitter, et cetera. Uh, so let's go over the goals today. What are we looking at? All right, uh, it's an intro to auction theory. Uh, volume profile, microstructure. Uh, we'll look at the historical uh, order flow uh, and its applications. Uh, we started to get into that a little bit yesterday. Uh, and then we're going to look at two simple structures here, range bound and trending. Right, and we're going to also uh, touch on the fractal natures of the markets. Uh, and then we're going to end up with some training exercises. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, questions, uh, I'm going to answer questions at the end, so uh, just uh, input them now uh, when you have the uh, the thought, and uh, I'll get to them at the end of the presentation. All right. Okay, so uh, yesterday we went over the dome, but uh, we're uh, going to move beyond that traditional dome or price ladder, okay, because it only displays the current market data, uh, which is great. Uh, you know, you get your real-time uh, bid and offer. Uh, your current price, last traded volume, uh, and uh, and the spread. However, it is fleeting. Okay, it displays only for a moment, uh, and then it's hard to recall those areas. Uh, the historical dome, uh, however, has these distinct advantages. Uh, we're going to uh, uh, well, all all of that current data is recorded and plotted onto the chart, uh, which allows you to easily see that data uh, and how it unfolded in detail. All right, so you can easily understand the current data uh, and the context uh, within the previous periods, and that's a that's a real advantage over the competition. Okay, and it gives you a lot of uh, insight to uh, the potential of the future behavior here. Okay, so a quick review. Uh, here is a uh, regular uh, or traditional dome. Uh, you you can see the depth here on the uh, on the offer, the depth on the bid, uh, and then your last uh, uh, traded price here, uh, and uh, best bid and offer. All right. So uh, this is the current dome uh, in Bookmap as we reviewed yesterday. Uh, but uh, the point I'm trying to make here is uh, all of this activity 
uh, in that current dome is recorded uh, and then it is transposed onto the chart historically. Okay? So for example, we can just look at this uh, very simple example. Uh, you can see that they were bidding here uh, uh, previously. Uh, then they pulled that liquidity as price is coming down uh, and then they started to add back in. Okay? Recording or understanding uh, that in your mind uh, within a dome is going to be a lot more challenging. Okay, and uh, you're you're going to have to uh, note that area as well as the other areas up here. Look how they're lowering the offer with higher liquidity here. Okay, it's all here in Bookmap recorded for you, so you have a very quick and easy reference and understanding to the behavior uh, in that auction. Okay. Okay, so let's apply that. Now uh, we looked at it yesterday. Uh, but now we're going to apply it in a structure. We're going to get a bigger picture structural context. Uh, and um, uh, yeah, the, we have that record of that intent to trade in those previous areas. Uh, easy to compare to the, uh, uh, to the traditional dome. Uh, easy to see compared to that traditional dome. Uh, and then um, uh, applies to this microstructure. Okay? We want to understand the context uh, of uh, uh, that auction. Uh, and uh, how they how they previously behaved, currently behaving, uh, and then uh, in the advanced lesson we're going to add some uh, additional studies and filters. Okay, again leads to that insight to that future auction activity and anticipated behavior. Okay, so let's look at the um, uh, structure uh, and microstructure here, uh, applying auction theory, uh, volume profile, and the context of that auction and the transactions. Okay, so uh, a review from yesterday of part one, the historical uh, dome data. Uh, let's uh, take a look at what we covered yesterday here. Uh, just very quickly, uh, we looked at uh, imbalances uh, in the auction. Uh, we looked at sweeping activity uh, in the book, uh, absorption and exhaustion. And uh, let's, uh, let's take a look here. Uh, we're just going to use a, a simple uh, chart. Uh, and we're going to take it take it uh, further from here, okay? All right. So uh, first thing, uh, identify very quickly uh, the sweeping activity that we covered yesterday. Okay, we see the sweeping of the price book uh, here to the to the downside, a rejection uh, trades right back into the middle. Okay, same action occurred here. All right, with this sweep, uh, this sweep was a little different. Okay, we can see the sweep down here, uh, and we uh, remain below a, a, a micro range. Okay, uh, you can see one more sweep down here, and this rejected, uh, and in fact, it swept to the opposite side, to the opposite side of this range. Okay, so uh, the auction imbalances uh, that uh, we recognized yesterday uh, occurred in some of these small areas here, as you can see. Okay. Points of exhaustion, where there is a lack of trading activity, uh, we can see here, uh, here, and here, uh, as well as these, uh, these other areas. Okay, now we're going to use all of this information here within the structure. Okay, so we just went over that and, and um, uh, uh, reviewed uh, lessons from part one, uh, but now we're going to extrapolate this data into the microstructure and context. Okay, with auction theory uh, and uh, a bigger picture uh, understanding of this auction activity. And we're going to cover shorter term high liquidity and longer term high liquidity. Okay, so let's take a step back in auction theory. What is it? All right. Uh, the price at which an asset is traded are represented by the highest price a buyer is willing to pay and the lowest price a seller is willing to sell. Buyers enter competitive bids and sellers enter competitive offers. Uh, these uh, these orders are matched and executed with the aggressor within the auction process. Okay, sounds simple enough. Well, let's take a look here uh, and um, our simple example again, uh, and we'll cover longer term liquidity. Okay, so if we take a look here at what's going on in this chart, uh, we're first going to identify where the participants are in this auction. Okay, based on this auction theory here, uh, the um, uh, the buyers and the sellers, where are they? And we're looking for the majority of them. And we can find them here. Okay, Very simple to identify in book map uh, in this historical dome uh, because uh, you, you can see it. Uh, here, here's their behavior. 
you know, they're, they're uh, staying in the book. Uh, they want to be sellers up in these areas. Okay? They want to be buyers down in these areas. Okay? And we're looking for the majority of these participants. Okay? And you can see we're channeling right in between those two. Okay? That is the current auction on a bigger scale here, okay? the structural scale we're looking at. Uh, yesterday, we were looking at uh, just basic mechanics, uh, and now we're applying that those basic mechanics to the bigger structure, the bigger picture, okay, within this uh, uh, historical limit order book, okay, and we can start to identify imbalances uh, in that auction like we did previously, okay, we see high liquidity here, okay, very short term though, it's in the book for only a short period, okay, and then it's pulled, okay, so what what is this behavior? Uh, and you, you can see, and we understand how that, um, uh, from yesterday's lesson, how it affects uh, price. Okay, so we're going to make a distinction between two different types of liquidity. Okay, longer term high liquidity and shorter term high liquidity. Okay, the shorter term high liquidity, it's, it's high liquidity but it's briefly in the book. Okay, it creates a large auction imbalance. This is new information for the auction participants. Okay, it skews that auction and it repels price away. Uh, price reacts to the to the uh, the difference in the supply and demand, uh, that imbalance. Okay. Okay. Um, understand the context of the area. Uh, are are we near uh, areas of longer term uh, liquidity? Uh, what are the relationships in the swings uh, in that microstructure and the relationship with volume? Okay. So. Um, uh, this uh, we're going to use an analogy here uh, to um, uh, define this a little bit better here, but let's move on to longer term high liquidity. This is high liquidity that remains in the book. Okay, it defines the auction like we were just looking at. Okay, this has already been digested. This information uh, by the auction participants. It knows where the market can trade. It knows that it can trade uh, uh, by finding that higher liquidity that's been in the book for a long time. Okay, and usually what is occurring is we, we have channeling between those longer term areas of liquidity. Uh, this kind of liquidity can act as a magnet. Okay, it doesn't repel price, it can attract price. Uh, it's because it's been in there for a while, it's already understood and comprehended. Uh, and the market knows that it can trade there. So the market needs liquidity to trade. Uh, if there's no imbalance in that, it understands where it can go to trade. Okay, it's always seeking that higher liquidity. And then understand the context of that uh, longer term high liquidity. Uh, is there uh, more or less liquidity around the area or do they have the tendency to pull that high liquidity as price uh, nears uh, their, that, that area? Okay, so let's again, let's take a look at the, the bigger picture here. We have our longer term liquidity and these auction imbalances are the shorter term high liquidity. Okay. And we can see how it works, that we can see how uh, we have an imbalance here in the auction. Okay, It's pressing price up into these areas up here, okay. and that longer term liquidity. We can also start to gauge the context of this liquidity. This is, these are, this is pretty um, uh, uh, insightful uh, uh, data to take a look at here, because they're providing high liquidity here on the offer, but they're pulling that liquidity here. But look, look a point uh, higher here. Uh, at uh, 57, uh, 60, 67, uh, they're waiting here. Okay, so uh, we don't we don't go up and uh, uh, test these areas, but um, uh, you know maybe they'll pull liquidity here. Uh, uh, buyers will charge up in, into these areas, uh, and um, and then maybe uh, we'll get a rejection and come back down. Okay, so you can see that they're both they're doing that on both sides here. Okay? We have high, higher liquidity here. Uh, and uh, and then down here as well. Okay, so we're getting context of that that area as well. Okay, um, so uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, you can see how uh, how these areas define that auction, uh, and then you can see the imbalances in this in the skews and how that affects price within that higher time frame auction. All right, so now let's get into the um, more about the auction theory and balance within a range. Okay, the value of the asset is determined uh, within a balance of a range. 
Okay, when price goes outside of that range value, um, well, then uh, that's where if it's too high, uh, usually what uh, what occurs is you find responsive sellers. Okay, if price goes too low uh, outside of that range, uh, you find responsive buyers. Okay, and price will return back into its uh, value range balance. Okay, so on a candlestick chart. Uh, this is a classic, uh, you know, auction auction theory here. Responsive sellers at the top here, responsive buyers down at these areas. Okay, you can see a lot of wicks here, buying and selling, uh, at the extent of the ranges. Okay, in Bookmap uh, or in that historical limit order book, uh, here here they are. Okay, the willing sellers up here, uh, outside of the range. Just to, this is the same example we were looking at, uh, and then. Uh, these are the responsive sellers and the willing buyers or, or responsive buyers down here outside of the range. So why does price return back into that range? And we'll use a simple analogy here uh, within an auction for, for basically anything, okay, looking at a computer, a car, a painting, whatever it might be. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, understand the uh, higher price. Uh, a scenario here uh, in that auction behavior okay well we're at a higher price there's less buying okay value is uh, is overpriced uh, people are going to wait for lower prices okay that's going to be the be the behavior normally uh, in this auction okay and you're going to find more selling right you're going to find profit taking you're going to find anyone who was holding inventory is going to be distributing it out uh, they're going to get a good. Uh, they're looking to get a good uh, price uh, for uh, for selling at higher areas. Okay, what about the in the um, uh, with lower price? Uh, what's the auction behavior there? Well, you find more buying. Okay, value is it's on sale. Okay, and what you uh, usually find is inventory accumulation. Okay, uh, you'll find buyers. Right. Uh, and uh, and you'll find less selling. Uh, um, people that are already holding that inventory are going to wait for higher prices. Okay? And in general, this is this is very in general here. Uh, but uh, you know you uh, uh, will usually see uh, price return back into a statistical average value. Okay. So for uh, for traders, uh, it's um, uh, fading the outside edges. Okay. Uh, back into value. All right. Well, let's take a look at a volume profile, uh, and the uh, and we're going to look at the transaction balance within a range. Okay, uh, balanced single distribution of volume. I'm sure a lot of you are very uh, familiar with this. Uh, and then uh, we're going to look at uh, time and price acceptance within this range. Okay. So here's our same chart, our same example, uh, and we can see time and acceptance uh, within this range here, price acceptance. Okay, our higher liquidity here uh, and our responsive um, sellers up in these areas and the buyers down here. Okay, and let's take a look at a volume profile now. Okay, very balanced single distribution of volume. Okay, this is your typical bell-shaped uh, uh, profile curve. Okay, and you can see the majority uh, of the uh, uh, trading takes place right in the middle here. Okay. So here's our, our longer term liquidity channeling between it, and uh, and, and the, now let's take a look at the um, the profile, uh, the components here. Okay, the VWAP, the POC, the the high volume node, the low volume node. Uh, James is already uh, talking about um, uh, value area high, value area low. I'm not going to go into that, James, uh, but um, uh, just uh, uh, that's a statistical. It's, just a, it's a detail on uh, on on this uh, information here. If you guys want to look at it, uh, uh, you're more than welcome. There's plenty of information on, on the web about that. Okay, so just uh, looking at the simple components here of a volume profile, the low volume node. At we're looking at low volume nodes at the edges here. Okay, there's uh, we we see there's there's no no selling uh, up in these areas or no buying. There's there's basically no volume or very little. Uh, at the edges, okay. Uh, our high volume node uh, and POC uh, is right here in the middle. Okay, this is the most traded price here of this range. Okay, and we also have the VWAP here, uh, and uh, and you can see that's this white line here. 
okay? And that's the um, evaluated average price, okay? So the VWAP is different from the high volume node or POC. Okay, and uh, just going to look at some skewed uh, volume profiles as well since we're, we're covering the volume profile. Uh, this uh, gives insight uh, to the, uh, uh, you know, the price action within that, uh, within that range. Okay, we're going to talk about B-shaped profiles and P-shaped profiles. In the B-shaped, it's more transactions occurring at um, lower areas, and then P-shaped, uh, more transactions at higher areas. And the insights it can give, uh, well, uh, we, have, uh, we have transaction uh, interest uh, in a skewed area. Right, so uh, it, it depends. It's this is all contextual. Uh, in uh, higher time frames, uh, make a difference here. Uh, but uh, is it going to be trap volume uh, at those lower areas uh, or higher areas, or are you going to see reversal uh, uh, and um, or, or or trend? Uh, you know, will there be price discovery uh, outside of that range, and uh, and then we start to get in a trending uh, uh, environment. Okay. It's all contextual, all right, within that bigger picture. Okay, so here's our skewed, uh, uh, you know, our B-shaped here, almost a double distribution basically. Uh, but um, uh, you can see that uh, there's more volume trading at the lower areas down here. Okay, uh, and you can see it very clearly here with the uh, the volume dots as well. All right. Okay, so um, uh, you know if uh, if more transactions are taking place at a lower area, well maybe you would uh, start to anticipate. Uh, more uh, trading to the downside in price discovery. Okay. Uh, but uh, if you take a, also a look at some of the volume and what kind of volume it is, and this is where this matters uh, in that context, as you can see there's a lot of buying volume down here compared to selling. All right. So uh, maybe some accumulation uh, and then continuation to the upside. Okay. But note again uh, the, uh, the high liquidity here. Okay. We're channeling between areas of high liquidity uh, here on the bid and then here on the offer. Okay, Some absorption up into this area as you can see and uh, some absorption down here as well. Okay, uh, Let's take a look at a, a P-shaped profile. Okay, The skewed distribution now is on the upside Okay, and it makes this kind of P-shaped uh, profile. Okay, and you can take a look at the majority of the volume. So these clusters of volume within the range. Okay, you can see again the range here. Our higher uh, liquidity uh, is down in some of the lower areas. Uh, longer term liquidity, and then uh, you can see it up here uh, on the offer, up in some of these areas here. Okay, and channeling in between those areas. All right. So let's take a look at um, advanced analysis of, uh, of the um, it within the range. Okay, the dis the single distribution example, um, and uh, we're going to um, because there's all sorts of things that you can you can see within uh, uh, this price action. Okay, exhaustion, absorption, stop runs, traps, uh, a price rejection, return back to value. There's a fractal nature of these markets. We can see patterns within patterns. Uh, and then we're going to apply the, the, what we learned in uh, uh, lesson one yesterday, uh, some of the order flow examples. Uh, put this all into context, read it, uh, and we can anticipate future price activity. Okay? So here's our, our, our example, uh, our longer term liquidity. We see our imbalances here with that shorter term liquidity. And uh, let's just take a look here. Okay? Our points of exhaustion here. And, uh, and we see uh, that sweep of the book here to the upside, uh, a, a complete rejection of this area. Price comes right back down into the, uh, into the range. Uh, so this is, uh, you know, this is going to be your stop run. Why? Uh, because, uh, you know, we, see, we already have uh, areas of exhaustion here. Okay. So, um, uh, uh, you know, it looks like, uh, you know, traders might be uh, uh, gearing, uh, you know, toward the, um, uh, a, a return back to the mean. Well, we, we um, uh, maybe they're starting to position themselves, looking for a return back to that mean. Uh, and then you can see that uh, the, you know we uh, we go up outside of that area, uh, and then return right back in. Okay. Uh, and then um, uh, the same same uh, activity occurs down here. We see our points of exhaustion down here. Okay. We have a swing low down here as well. 
Okay, and uh, look how we just tap below uh, that area here, uh, grab the liquidity, okay, and uh, and then trade back actually to the other side of the uh, where it finds liquidity here on the offer. Okay, so again, uh, very very trappy uh, activity. Uh, you would think that looking at this very simple profile here, that this is going to be pretty easy fading outside edges. Uh, and, re and returns back into the norm. This is actually, there's a lot going on uh, and it can be uh, 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 very tricky uh, to trade. Uh, in fact, you, you know, this uh, higher liquidity as previously noted, uh, you, can, uh, you can see how they're pulling here. It's, there's po potential here for the buyers to, uh, to continue on up, but uh, they'll run right into higher liquidity at a higher level. All right, uh, and then uh, uh, if those guys are wrong uh, and we see a lot of uh, selling, uh, responsive sellers uh, return right back down and probably hit the other side of the range, okay? Uh, I think what the statistic is, um, uh, I've heard from many uh, traders, uh, if you get a, a, a price um, that uh, goes outside of the trading range, rejects and comes back into the middle, uh, that there is an 80% chance uh, of it um, uh, returning and testing the other side of that range. Okay, and that's exactly what occurred here twice in this example. Here's the one example outside, and then the return back down uh, and makes a lower low here. Okay, and then look at this example here. Right, we have a um, uh, that lower low it tests this area, and we come right back up and test the other side and actually make a higher high within the range. Okay, uh, and um, uh, that's just from uh, identifying some of the um, uh, market mechanics that we were looking at yesterday uh, and starting to apply that within this bigger uh, structural range. Uh, but uh, we can also see here the, uh, the fractal ranges within that larger range. Okay, so again, we can start to apply uh, what we learned yesterday uh, with the basic mechanics Okay, we have our stop run or our, our, our sweep here. Uh, it's rejected, comes back into the middle, uh, but uh, we have a, a, a fractal here. Okay, uh, we, are, we are now uh, accepting at a um, uh, higher level here outside of this little, this little range here. Okay, and, uh, and you can see that um, uh, it, it's starting to, there's time and acceptance uh, in this microstructural range. Okay, well, what occurs here? Okay, we have, an, again, a sweep of the book. Okay, we sweep down and we accept below uh, in a new range here, a range within a range. Okay, nice points of exhaustion up here, uh, more selling to the downside. We get that uh, bit of extension here and reject and come right back up and um, uh, trade outside of this micro range into a new micro range here on the upside. Okay, very trappy environment and uh, a lot of things going on here. All right, uh, so let's uh, now take a look at some uh, imbalance, uh, not, not balance, but imbalance uh, in the um, uh, auction uh, theory, and, and, and we're gonna apply this to a trend. Okay, so an imbalance, uh, it's an upset within the, the balanced auction uh, range environment. Okay, price breaks out of that range. Uh, in the breakouts, what you start to see is large initiated buying. Okay, not responsive buying, it's initiated buying. Okay, and it redefines value to the upside. Okay, on the breakdowns, uh, you have large initiated selling. Okay, and it redefines value to the downside. Okay, the uh, uh, reevaluation price accepts outside of that original value range. Okay. All right, that price discovery, um, uh, usually we see uh, continuation and price discovery in the move of the initiated um, uh, buyers or sellers. Okay, this revaluation, it, it'll repeat uh, and then you'll, you'll have a trend beginning. Okay, so like in this example here, that trend never got started. Okay, uh, we, we see the uh, uh, values change here, uh, but we don't see a trending environment. Okay. Simple candlestick stick chart and uptrend. Uh, we this is where we can find uh, our initiated buyers um, in this uh, in this uh, trending environment. 
Okay, price moves outside of the range. Uh, initiated buyers here are at some of these levels, as you can see, uh, and uh, and we break outside of the range, and we have time and acceptance above it. Okay? We actually get a nice retest into a micro range here, uh, and we find again initiated buying uh, right in around this area here that presses price up through uh, this this small range here, and now we're in a new range. Okay, again we find initiated buying here. Uh, at this area, and we see a nice move to the upside. Okay. And, um, uh, you know, there's a, a lot of structures within structures here, but uh, looking at the bigger picture, this range here, uh, our initiated buying starts to occur in this area here, and we break through up outside of that range, uh, except you can see the pullback to it, uh, and then the continuation. Okay. What does that look like in bookmap? Okay, uh, we can very clearly identify that initiated buying. Okay, which is very much like a footprint chart. Uh, you're going to start to see large volume dots in these areas. Okay, this one's a little suspect down here. Uh, this is the initial break. Okay, but you can see uh, uh, there's some there's some buying here, uh, a, a pull of liquidity, uh, but uh, and then we see a lot of buying start to uh, start to take here as well. Uh, and um, a pulling price upwards, we can see the acceptance here. Uh, we do get our retest, uh, and then look at the um, uh, the initiated buying here. Okay, large volume dots. This is what we're looking for. Okay, it's going to pull price up outside of this trading range. Okay, uh, and um, uh, that's exactly what it did. Okay, very aggressive uh, move here up into higher liquidity. Okay, and it happens yet again here. Okay, more initiated buying uh, outside of a range, breakthrough, uh, and continuation to the upside. Okay, we see it in one more time here, uh, yet again, and breakthrough uh, to the upside. Okay, so uh, that's what uh, pulls price up outside of the ranges. And uh, let's start to identify the auction. Okay, that longer term liquidity, how is it behaving in some of these areas? Okay. Well, we can see that uh, longer term liquidity, it, it was initially down here. Uh, and, uh, and then we see the, um, uh, this, uh, this break to the upside, but there, where's that liquidity? That longer term liquidity is still down here. Okay? Uh, but uh, this initiated buying here is what we get that pulls us up into that longer term liquidity that's waiting here on the offer. Okay, you can you can very clearly see it. These, these areas are, are targets for that reevaluation of price. Okay. In that trending environment, you usually don't see uh, liquidity follow uh, to the upside. Okay. You might get these shorter term um, uh, imbalances, and we're going to go through that here. Okay. So that shorter term uh, high liquidity, uh, you might see uh, in some of these little areas here that just kind of um, uh, uh, presses price uh, into, uh, uh, you know, uh, maybe skews that auction uh, a bit to uh, initiate uh, buyers to jump in. Okay, and we can uh, we, we see it all the time. Uh, just that shorter term liquidity, uh, it uh, doesn't stay in the book for very long. Uh, just skews it a little bit and gives it a little bit of a push to the upside. Okay, and now we can see how of this auction imbalance, uh, how, how it reacts within the uh, the bigger picture here. Okay, of that longer term liquidity in a trend. Okay, uh, so why does price accept? Uh, uh, higher uh, in that uptrend. Okay, what's well, a reevaluation of the asset? Okay, uh, usually uh, it, it can occur. Um, the repricing occurs after a geopolitical or economic event. Uh, you know, it could be some sort of uh, news uh, or uh, uh, you know economic data. Uh, we see continu continuation of that bigger trend. Uh, that's possible as well. So there's already a bigger uh, picture supply and demand imbalance, uh, and um, or, or it might be uh, very simply uh, that auction imbalance um, uh, and or uh, large initiated buying together, okay? And uh, that, uh, uh, that alone will uh, uh, allow price to trade and accept above or below uh, a defined range. Okay, and let's just apply this um, understanding uh, within the um, an analogy here uh, that we used before, buying or selling anything, okay, computer, a car, painting, uh, whatever it might be, okay, at a high, we're at a higher price, for example, okay, the um, uh, 
there's there's demand. Uh, there's auction demand uh, behavior here. Uh, there's buying interest uh, at higher levels, okay? and there's a lack of selling at lower levels. Okay, uh, and uh, and price revalues at the higher levels. Okay, so it's that it's that imbalance here uh, that we're talking about. Uh, and the, let's just take a look here. It probably be easier to explain here uh, by looking at the chart. Okay, so we see our initiated buying, okay, imbalances in some of these areas here, okay, uh, and uh, it pulls price up outside of those areas, and we see buyers here, they, they look at all of the buying here, okay, that's where the reevaluation occurs. If there's, if this does not auction properly within this area here, and you don't really find the buyers to support it, uh, we will, we'll, this will be a rejection of that uh, breakout and a return back into value. Okay, but this is where the reevaluation occurs here with that initiated buying, okay, and continuation of that buying, okay, and then we have the lack of selling here, okay, our exhaustive points in a trend, this is very typical, okay, uh, on our, our um, uh, uh, retest uh, to, the, uh, to the downside, we have higher lows uh, in this environment, we have very, very few sellers, okay. And uh, and we can see that here in the in the um, uh, transactions. Okay, we have we have some some selling up here, but compared to the big green volume dots here, and uh, in, in here as well, uh, this is a lack of selling. Okay, in reference to these other areas. Okay, and uh, this is important. Uh, it's seeking uh, reevaluation uh, price, and where where is it going to find it? Well, it's going to find it with the higher liquidity is. Okay, that higher liquidity that remains in the book. Okay, that's gonna that's what's revaluing price right now. Okay, that's exactly where it's going. Uh, it's hitting those areas. Uh, you, you can start to understand and, and drill in to the uh, uh, micro levels uh, to understand uh, what exactly is occurring here. But uh, usually, what you get is a lot of absorption up in these areas. Okay, and then you we trickle back down. Uh, we get exhaustion, uh, and then we uh, uh, price just charges through the the uh, aggressive sellers or buyers. The buyers in this case uh, charge right through uh, these areas of uh, of high liquidity. They they take it all. Okay, they sweep the book. Okay, so now we're starting to comprehend that sweeping activity outside of ranges uh, and understanding uh, time and acceptance above in a new range. So let's cover the volume profile uh, and the transactions within this uptrend. Okay, we have a multiple distribution of volume. Okay, there are multiple high volume nodes and low volume nodes. Very typical of that trending environment. Okay, a breakout is established um, uh, out of the out of the range. Time and acceptance uh, in that new range and break into a new range. Okay, so here's our um, uh, multiple uh, volume profile in a trend. Very very typical. See one profile here, another profile, uh, another, another, and another. Okay, it is trending higher. Okay, and uh, start to uh, extrapolate some of the lessons from yesterday, understanding the sweep of the book. Okay, and that uh, you're going to get your um, your low volume and high volume nodes in some of these areas here. Okay, usually where we break from, although we see big uh, initiated buying in some of these areas, compared to the volume in the range. Uh, this is uh, this is your low volume node, as you can see here. It's a little bit higher here in this case. Okay, our low volume node is here, though. Um, we come right back down to test it. Okay. Uh, and here's our low volume node, just maybe a tick or two off uh, to the upside here. Uh, but uh, you can see that um, uh, the sweeping activity uh, to the upside, uh, and um, uh, now actually pretty aggressive sweep. Uh, that uh, we don't our, our low volume node is uh, is a bit higher here. Okay, in this case as well. All right, one more here, our low volume node here as well, uh, breaking outside of that range uh, and uh, establishing that uh, time and acceptance above the, the, the previous range. Okay, look at our high volume nodes in some of these areas uh, here as well. Uh, and um, I usually you can align um, uh, that uh, uh, just uh, right, right in the middle of these ranges, you know, more or less. You can see a P-shaped here. Uh, maybe a little bit of a P-shaped here, but this, these are these are pretty nicely distributed, right? 
Okay. Uh, what about the, the value uh, within a trend? Uh, you know, we're going to look at the kind of balance within that trending environment. I mean, we, we originally spoke about it being an imbalance, uh, but there is something to this, right? And that's how you, you have your trend lines. Uh, it, uh, it gives a structure to that reevaluation process of the asset. Okay. Absorption at the higher highs, we have our profit taking. Uh, and then um, uh, exhaustion at the lower highs, okay, followed by more initiated buying. Okay. What does that look like here? Okay. Well, this is where you get your, your, your trend lines and channeling, okay. your diagonal balance within established trend. Okay. And you can see here that uh, really uh, this um, uh, imbalance here reestablishes that trend. Okay. So uh, you know we were uh, we were trending upwards, uh, and uh, and you can see how uh, nicely it came right back down into some of these areas. Uh, but the, this large amount of buying reestablished that trend, and you can see how nicely these uh, work work out together. Okay. Well, let's get into some advanced analysis of that trend. Uh, and um, uh, high liquidity uh, and large transactions. Okay, absorption at the higher highs. Uh, low liquidity and fewer transactions, exhaustion at the lower lows. Okay, we've been covering that. Uh, but let's look also at the strength of the trend. Okay, we just looked at that in the, in the diagonal uh, moves, but uh, we're going to look at some measured moves here. Okay, and uh, uh, let's, uh, let's jump in here uh, and um, let me show you the measured moves. Right, fractal nature uh, in, that, um, in that trend. Uh, we have our, our measured moves within the pullback. Uh, this is exactly 10 ticks here. Okay, this this is a stronger move and break outside of this range. It's actually 12 ticks. Okay, and that repeats again here. Okay, and then uh, we have finally one more uh, to the upside here, which is uh, uh, 10 ticks. Okay, and it's, it's reference to the uh, the one that began that trend. That this trend is starting to wane uh, potentially at this point. It's only a few ticks difference, but uh, they're more or less the same as well. Okay? But you're going to see that, uh, and you can relate that to uh, this, uh, this diagonal balance within that uh, established trend. Okay? All right, that's the fractal nature. I kind of jumped ahead here. Um, but um, uh, all right, the strength of that trend, the measured moves, uh, and the stop runs and liquidity grabs. Okay. Um, so um, uh, let's take a look here. All right, in that strong trend, uh, we get our pullback to our low volume node or, or uh, that last big uh, a flurry of, of volume or activity. Okay? So when you have the, the very strong uh, trend move here, as you can see, you know, we, uh, uh, we, uh, we moved a, a very aggressively to the upside. Well, look at the pullback. Okay. We didn't even come back. No, actually, I think we did, we came very close to the low volume node here. Uh, but this is where that that initiated buying yet a, again occurred here. Okay, so uh, the the pullback is meager. Uh, the the move out of here was very strong. Okay, so um, uh, you won't get a, a pullback into some of these this area down here, right? And with that strong trending environment, the same occurred here. Okay. Very, very strong trending move. Uh, the, the pullbacks are very shallow. Okay. Uh, now, in the, this initial move here uh, to the upside, though, as well as this last move here, uh, we, we get a pullback to where we broke from. Okay. So pull back to that low volume node here, uh, as well as here. Okay. Just, just basically, uh, uh, you know, to the tick. All right. So. Um, uh, you can start to understand the um, the strength of these moves uh, and start to anticipate pullbacks. Okay, and that's going to this is all you can see where we're all going um, uh, with this uh, tomorrow. We're going to put this together into strategies and setups. Okay, we we covered the measured moves, uh, but um, all right, uh, let's go through some of the training exercises here. That's it for uh, for part two, understanding the uh, the structures uh, and. Um, uh, order flow, historical order flow, uh, and transactions and volume profile uh, within this auction process. All right. So um, uh, uh, next step, 
go through these microstructures, okay? Apply that auction theory and volume profile um, uh, concepts to it, uh, and then mark up several examples in a chart. Okay? You can use the bookmap replay mode if you have bookmap. Uh, it's an excellent way to uh, to review uh, all of this data uh, and um, uh, study the the price movements within these structures. Start with one example. Focus on one chart. Okay. Understand the details of that auction okay. and the transaction behavior within uh, that example. Okay. And then move on to the next. Okay. And note the variations in the next example. Okay. Uh, the more that uh, uh, you go through this, uh, the more that uh, you're going to start to uh, piece together. Uh, this environment and then start to anticipate uh, maybe the, the the deepness of the pullback uh, and uh, where initiated buyers might uh, yet again jump in uh, and um, uh, anticipate uh, maybe continuation here in that trend. Okay. All right. Uh, and then uh, tomorrow, uh, just a preview here, uh, we're going to uh, get into the practical applications of this um, this information. Uh, we're going to go through the uh, the context of the auction and the transaction. This is very important. Uh, we want to understand not just one white line of high liquidity. We want to understand the context of it historically, uh, and um, uh, you know how how it behaved previously, uh, or are they uh, adding more in uh, an area? Where are they adding in? Are they adding in? Uh, uh, let's say they're on the offer. Are they, are they lowering the offer with uh, more liquidity or are they pulling it and adding it above? This is going to give us a lot of context and a lot of understanding uh, to uh, uh, the anticipated move. Okay, And then we're going to put that together with traditional tape reading uh, and um, uh, where those transactions occur. Okay, And then we're going to anticipate that price move okay? with a strategy or a setup. Okay, And we're going to cover that tomorrow. All right. Okay. Uh, let's get to some of these questions. Uh, let's see here. DX is only for stocks. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, Guido, I don't know if that'll work for other uh, platforms. Uh, we have a, a, a deal with uh, DX. Uh, DX feed. Okay. Um, you can uh, uh, you know talk with support about that. Uh, on the price. Okay. Yep, Francisco, price will go up and up until it finds that seller. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay, now Francisco, I went over the initiated buying and selling as well. Well, I mean, usually you're going to see a, kind of a, a battle at, um, uh, you know, right in the middle of value um, uh, and, and look at those areas of the, of the POC. Uh, and, uh, and, and then you'll see like um, uh, that initiated buying or selling, okay? Uh, charging up, you know, and gaining momentum out of that area, okay? That's where that reevaluation, uh, a lot of the times it, it'll reoccur. Uh, and, you know, I mean, you can see it, Francisco. Uh, I mean, uh, that's why I, I um, uh, really implore you to, you know, you know, take take a look at some of these charts, mark them up, uh, and you, you'll see the behavior here. Uh, and I think that, uh, uh, you know, focusing on one example, uh, and then um, uh, I, I think it's going to give you a lot of insight uh, to, uh, uh, you know, the anticip anticipated move. Ah, thanks, Mauricio. Maurice. Okay. All right. Uh, Ken, there is some some data that uh, a book map can be fed into. Okay, the time and sales uh, data information. You know, can go uh, directly into. Uh, you can export it as um, uh, into Excel. Okay. 
Uh, Sadar, that also answers your question. Uh, SJ, uh, in the midst of a trend, is there a way to anticipate the amount of a pullback example? Uh, yeah, uh, no, I just went over that as well. Um, so, um, you know, the, those strong moves here, and we're going to get more into that in, this, in the setups, okay? But um, uh, you can see the, uh, 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 you know, the, the shallow pullback here. Okay, but uh, in, in this initial move here, I mean, this this isn't a lot of volume, right? Uh, and uh, because of that, that this initiated buying uh, in these areas up here, uh, you get a much deeper pullback. Okay. Now you know that that <laughs> it, it's contextual. I mean, uh, what if we run into like really high liquidity here, and they're very very aggressive, uh, and uh, and then you see a lot of uh, uh, you know initiated selling. Uh, outside of this small range here, right? Well, you know, then you can anticipate maybe a move back into this range here, okay? But we didn't get that here, right? Now you can see that there's not much selling, okay? Okay, all right, guys. Uh, let's, uh, that ends the uh, uh, lesson two. Uh, and um, let me know if you have any questions, uh, but um, we will... Um, I continue on tomorrow with uh, with part three. Yeah, you're welcome, Guido. Um, uh, Sadar, let's see. Um, any sorts of deals on Bookmap for the month of July? Um, not that I know of, uh, but um, uh, you can reach out to support at uh, bookmap.com, and uh, uh, you know we can. Uh, 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 take a look there for you, okay? All right. Okay. All right, guys. Yeah, thanks for coming, and uh, we'll we'll call it a day, and uh, we'll catch up tomorrow uh, with uh, part three, and uh, look at the um, uh, uh, some of the uh, the context of this auction uh, and the transactions, uh, and then uh, start to apply strategies and setups to it. Okay, and take advantage of the education that we've already covered for the last two days. All right, thanks for coming. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow.